Hey guys, a couple of years ago, Laura and I decided to tackle New Zealand's biggest gap year in which we challenged ourselves to do 365 activities all around New Zealand in only 365 days. This is only day 18 and we are already leaving the town of Hamilton toward the town of Raglan and we're checking out an awesome waterfall along the way. So today we're leaving Hamilton after spending um, quite a few days there and having um, you know some ups and some downs. You know we had a lot of fun in the city and we did a lot of fun activities, but this camper van is still a nightmare. So we will have to be back very soon. With any New Zealand road, it, it always starts off straight and then it starts to get a little more interesting. And by interesting, I mean windy as hell. On the way, we noticed there is a tourist hotspot, which is a wind farm viewing area. Um, obviously, we can see the wind farms as we're driving along, and we're kind of like, oh yeah, there's a wind farm over there. But there's a whole viewing area dedicated to viewing such wind farms. So we pack up there, and this is a letdown. It's literally facing a road with, uh, with some, um, the wires like electrical wires and then behind maybe in the horizon if you have a good day you'll see a couple of wind farm um what a letdown i mean come on like new zealand your first some of the best view in the world what the hell is this one Now on the way from Hamilton to Raglan, I really recommend you check out Bridal Veil Waterfall. It's a very short hike and it's really pretty. So we're heading down, walking through this beautiful kind of mystical forest with a beautiful path. We are stopping um, at the entrance where we are greeted by a pole that basically welcome us in this area. Tihe Maui Ora, ne wehi ki te atua. Ko ia te piri n piringa kaputa ka ora. Ra me ti ako tatu mo na ui faka tupu te na ra tatu katoa. We greet all of you who come from near and far to this special place. Sleep lightly and enjoy. No one's going to understand that, Robin. I think they will. I think uh, I think everybody speaks uh, the all Robin I heard, language. All I heard was forget, forget, forget. <laughs> Honestly, I have to say that um, being able to do a hike in short on the third week of winter, it's pretty epic. It's really good to be back in like a wilderness environment because we've been spending some time in the city recently, you know, sipping tea and all that. So it's good to be back in the forest and it just looks beautiful straight away. I'm kind of expecting to hear the waterfall before I see it, but somehow this is a stealthy waterfall because all of a sudden the forest just goes away. There's a drop in front of us and oh yeah, there's the waterfall beside us. The Bridal Veil waterfall is located in a small um, little enclave, so you get mountain and thick forest all around. So it makes it really isolated and if you don't know it's there, there's no way you know it's there. Even while driving, you don't hear the noise of the waterfall. Even when walking toward the waterfall in the small forest, you barely hear the noise. You only hear it when you're facing it because it's just back to a massive cliff which is concave. So the water is falling up here and the cliff is doing that way. So you just get the noise and just push it toward the other way. So it's kind of, yeah, you don't know it's there if you don't look at the sign, if you don't look for it actively. And it's really amazing to be able to be that close of the waterfall. It looks really amazing from this first top viewing area. You, you're literally stood on the edge with the waterfall and if you're afraid of heights, then probably not a good place to stand. So there's a few different viewing areas to the Bridal Veil Falls. The middle area is obviously really good because you get the whole grand scale of the waterfall, but obviously you need to go to the base. And to get down there, you need to go down 261 steps. 
from the midway lookout, you see the whole waterfall you know, from top to bottom, and you see the water just smashing down. And then you, you also can feel the green just, you know, washing your face. And you see also the concave cliff just behind it. This is like millions of years in the making, and it's just an incredible sight, and it's so easy to go to. It is awesome. So we go down the 261 steps, and ta da, it is unveiled. The bridal veil falls is unveiled um, and the base looks, you know, it looks really awesome. Massive pool, goes into small stream. So it's quite cool and, and you know, it's also a good photo up to just see the, you know, the water just smashing and a very, very, very small river created out of this gigantic waterfall. I mean, the waterfall is humongous and then the river is like ridiculous, but I, I don't know, I just love seeing it. And it's time to go up. And this is where Laura is having a hard time. She's behind me like, <gasps> I feel I'm chased by a horde of hippopotamus out of shape. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, the roar which is behind. It overpowers the roar of the waterfall for fuck's sake. I finally managed to hold myself up there and I'm breathing so heavily. In conclusion, I really hope I get fit after this trip because this was a shameful day for me. It was powerful. It was intense. I don't know if I'm going to make the last two minutes of this walk, <laughs> but I'm going to soldier on. <gasps> How are your legs feeling? They feel like, like heavy steel right now. Like it's not that my legs are I'm not the man of steel, like Superman, but literally my legs feel as heavy as steel. <sighs> We're getting back to the camper van and heading back on the road. And when we were on the road, we could have timed it better. The sun is setting and just behind the mountain, in the distance, the sun is just going behind it and the sunbeams are coming from behind it and it looks epic. The Raglan Backpackers is really is all about like surfing because Raglan is all about surfing. So it's a really good atmosphere. Everybody here is just like really relaxed and just ready to surf. There's like the hot pools. People are, are just relaxing in it. The showers are shaped like surfboard. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. So we go in the kitchen and I'm sick of Laura's food. Uh, I've been eating like, you know, frozen pies for the last, I don't know how long. So it's time for me to make some good food. The nice homemade pizza right here. My own little homemade base. And uh, yeah, it's going to be tasting good. And, and a lot of cheese, of course. They're not as good as pies, no. Pies are awful, but the pizzas are amazing. So we eat some pizza, we go and have a couple of drinks um, with some people in the hostel. So we need to now get some rest because we're gonna go to an eel farm tomorrow and that might just take it out of us. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope that you really liked this video. We really enjoyed driving around New Zealand. Just the road trips alone are activities in itself. And there is so much to see along the way. You could see um, this amazing waterfall with us. And oh my God, like the views were fantastic. It was just off the road. The, dry, the, the walk was just really short. I mean, it's just perfect. Now I'm gonna go through the questions that we received on this video the first time we published it. And the first thing that we actually have is from Gigilia Music um, that basically asks us not to try to pronounce Maori words too much uh, until we learn proper pronunciation. Now the thing is, um, so I obviously have a very strong French accent and Laura is from the UK and learning Maori is extremely hard so sometimes we do try to pronounce some um, so, some words and it's by no means uh, uh, you know any disrespect to any culture. We try our best but we just want to show the culture to the world and despite the fact that we can't really say those words very well we try really hard but um, you know we always kind of tell people we're not great at doing those kind of pronunciation and 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 it's it, you know it, it happens to be fair 
I don't pronounce English words well anyway, so there is kind of no language that I master anymore. So here you go. Um, but yeah, we, we're very sorry that this offended you and hopefully um, you forgive us and you see the good that we're doing by showcasing all the awesome Maori cultures all around New Zealand. Now there is another comment from Tracy that say that she was happy that uh, she wasn't the only one huffing and puffing her way up the stairs. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's always easier to go down the stairs than it is to go up. And uh, New Zealand hikes are famous for having a lot, a lot of stairs. I mean, you're going to see us going um, to Cape Palisa Lighthouse, which is nearby Wellington. And this probably is one of the toughest stairs that we had to climb in the country. Um, and you're also going to see us uh, do the Tongaro Crossing, which has, which has a set of stairs and a section of the hike, which is literally called the Devil's Stairways or Devil's Staircase, something like that. But yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty rough, but it, it's, it's quite fun. Uh, but there is a lot of hikes around the country which are actually extremely easy to access. So um, that's by no means, um, um, you know, should... For, like make, basically make you scared of going to New Zealand or not being able to do any hike. There is a ton of amazing hike that you guys are going to be able to do even if you don't feel like going up the stairs. And if you think it's going to be a bit tough, anyway, just take your time. There is, there is no need to rush. We always kind of look like we're kind of rushing. Um, but, you know, while shooting all those videos, well, we have to do all the filming and everything. So we very quickly run out of time. So uh, it's maybe a good thing that, um, that we're going fast during some of the sections of the hike. But you will have way more time than we do. Anyway, um, if you guys are planning your trip to New Zealand, you can join us during our live session. It's happening every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time. It's probably Saturday on your side. And it's a great place to come with Laura and I, hang out on the couch and just ask us your questions about the trip that you are, you are planning to New Zealand and we can help you out plan it. Um, if you don't have time to join us, you can check out www.nzpocketguide.com. It's the largest travel guide to New Zealand and it's totally free to use and it's done by Laura and I. And finally, if you want us to pick your questions up and answer them on video like we do every single week, you can put your question in any comment of any of our video on YouTube. In the meantime, thank you very much for liking, subscribing and supporting the channel um, and supporting all our hard work. In the meantime, have a lovely day. Bye-bye.